Yeah, here we go. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGen. Episode number 201. 201. Road to South by Southwest. I want to welcome uh, TB on up. I uh, hope you are doing well. Uh, just know that we are in the middle of nowhere, and this space might get rugged here and there by Twitter. As we are in the middle of nowhere, but uh, that's okay. Um, TB, if you want to put in a request to speak, I'd love to have you up. Twitter has given me the slow pull on uh, trying to do anything, so I'm more afraid of trying to bring anyone up uh, to uh, that it might uh, do hard. Uh, we just want to welcome people on up. Uh, and so, yeah, it's going to be a long night tonight. We have uh, with us, as always, a uh, great co-host tonight. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to join in with us. Uh, we have the wonderful Eskimo. Eskimo, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. Just watching the road. Just watching the road. Uh, right now we uh, just flew from... Uh, well, not flew. Well, we drove away from East Denver. What a great time it was. Uh, really, uh, what, was, what was some of your takeaways from East Denver? Uh, let's see. There are a ton of projects building. Yeah. What kind of projects did you, did you get to see building out? Well, I was walking around handing out stickers for for Pleb. Okay. But um, let's see, what did I pay attention to? I went over to see Colt Dow. Okay. Uh, I saw Colt Dow too. What what is Colt Dow about? Do you know? Let's see. I started to read part of the manifesto. Okay. And then it reminded me that. Whole poor club had a club festo. Okay. Uh, but I think what they're trying to do is use capitalistic type principles. Um, and choose projects that they feel will be, I think, profitable but bring together community members to have a, like a strong way of getting into them. I don't, I'm not, I didn't get to talk to anyone there. I was just reading the manifesto and it sounded to me a lot more like there, it wasn't exactly a political philosophy, but that it was a group of people who was very well aware of all of the scams and all the things that happened in crypto and all of what, we're up against or what crypto could be up against in terms of traditional finance and traditional money making, money printing. Um, what did you take? What did you take away from that? Um, I, didn't, I didn't get to ta- talk to Colt Dow. I did grab the manifesto to read later. Um, talked with a couple of the layer ones that are there. Um, Unfortunately, I uh, didn't get to talk to the layer ones until like day three when everyone was burnt out. And I yeah. say burnt out just because East Denver, we got there on the 25th of February and we were there all the way until the uh, 6th of February. Uh, and it went every day between the 25th to the 5th. Um, so a lot of teams were, were just worn out because they were talking to everyone uh, non-stop. Yeah, there were thousands of people there. Over 24,000 people. And I think that a smaller venue, someone mentioned that there was a smaller venue last year. I know you had said that you liked it, but I did think that that venue was suitable for the amount of people that were there. Yeah. Um, it could handle the crowd without it feeling like you couldn't get anywhere or get by anyone. 
but it still felt like there were quite a few people there. Yeah. So last year, one of the main differences was like different protocols took over different buildings. So they had their own building. Like Near took over uh, one one building. Harmony took over a building. Algorand took over a building. Um, Unique took over a building. Uh, yeah, there there was a there was a couple different things. One of, oh, one of the really cool things learning Algorand is uh, making the, an EVM compiler. Yeah, you had mentioned that. And what's cool is, uh, so I know the founder of Algorand, PJ, and I actually ran into him later on. Um, and uh, I talked more about it. He, was, he said he was at that event that we, we'd gone to, hosted by One Piece Labs and Algorand. And, uh, you know, they, that's where they were sort of talking about it. But uh, missed seeing P, uh, PJ there. But, uh, yeah, no. They're we're making a they have an EVM compiler out so that uh, smart contracts can run on Algorand and bridge over. Um, speaking of bridges, want to do a shout out to uh, the family over at Swing.xyz. Uh, all your bridging needs in one place. Oh my God, I sound like a commercial at times. You can. I think you should keep it up. Okay. Well, we are not sponsored by Swing, but right, crypto smooth jazz. Crypto Smooth Jazz 101.4, actually 201.1. Uh, we are a mile marker. We, we have uh, 36 miles to drive until we get gas. We're going to keep going. We'll keep going after that. Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, so other, con other conferences we went to, we went to Supermoon. Yep. Uh, At the clock tower. Yeah. Um, we only got to listen to a, a couple of the pitches. Um, I know Vadim uh, from, uh, oh, what is it, Dexfy. He was talking about his new yield aggregator tool. Uh, so you don't need to go visit all the different DEXs, but uh, it has it all in one place. And works to optimize uh, without penalty all of, all of your, your DEXing needs. Sort of like beefy, but uh, aiming towards more the higher reward, low risk pieces, um, which is pretty cool. There was a couple other projects there. Uh, didn't get to see them all, uh, but a huge shout out to Blue Down uh, and Techstars. Um, glad that you guys were able to uh, get that there and showcase uh, all that Techstars does for founders within web three so that was pretty amazing i wish i had seen that i remember when we went to the blue Dell event in new york uh listening to people talk about tech stars yeah uh, it seemed like a good organization i didn't know much about it before that yeah no um tech stars are based out of new york there's a couple others uh locations around around the globe um almost like a we works type of situation but incubator uh, pretty cool. Uh, founders become members, and then they, they advise the new projects to come through. Um, got to run into uh, Amy and Miss Jess. Want to do a huge congratulations to you to winning all of your hackathons down in Bogota. Um, not sure how you did at uh, East Denver, but hats off to you. I know you probably, you know, rocked it. Um, there were some cool projects that won at East Denver. Uh, we got to listen to some of them at the end. Um, there was one that, that sort of was really cool. was a non, non-internet connected wallet. So that it could do transactions and process transactions uh, without connection to the internet. Um, and uh, they even built, it, built a full working model for it. Oh yeah, I really like that. Um, the, the, the takeaway from it that he said at the end was, do not use it other than on testnet. You will most likely use, lose your funds. Since we created this, since we only created this about three hours ago. Yeah. Yeah. They, they got a, the working up three hours before uh, they, they spoke. Um, but a huge shout out to all of those people that are doing those things. Um, 
you know, uh, missed, uh, got to talk at Dow Planet. Um, huge shout out to Dow Planet, Dow Denver, um, talking on the governance of, of Dow's with uh, Shelby, Alexa, MakerDAO, and Gamma. Oh man, I'm gonna mess this up. Gamma, Mega. I I'm going MGA Dow. Uh, that is all I remember off of that. Um, and uh, I don't know. It was a, it was a real honor to be able to talk there, um, talking on Dow governance, and uh, I was sort of the the curveball of the group. Um, I tried reaching out to the group on Discord, you know, because I've been added to the panel. Um, and with everything going on, you know, no one had seen the messages. And, uh, yeah, but it was sort of funny how they had my picture up on the board. Sort of like it was an NFT off to the side, just sort of stapled there. I don't know. That was sort of funny in my eyes. Yes, I, I saw that. So they got you up there. They got me up there. You were up there. Yeah. Um, a huge shout out to Steve too. Helped out just a little, fill in some blank space. Um, but uh, ThriveCoin, Daniel from ThriveCoin, really, really nailed it out of the park with uh, his presentation on ThriveCoin, taking over uh, MakerDAO and also ApeCoin DAO, um, or Bankless. I think Bankless DAO and Eight Point DAO. Yeah, I think he was using Banker DAO as an example of how, look how this can go. Not as predicted now, it, or not as moved by early members of the DAO. Yeah. I think. Okay. What did you think about Baker Dow? No, I mean, I, I think he was using that as a cautionary tale. Oh, yeah. And saying that, you know, setting them up or how to, you know, how... I think the people that were up there had experience with how one had hoped perhaps with rose colored glasses to see this type of governance work and grow and prosper and be more democratic and are now realizing that there needs to be either certain types of thinking or guardrails in place somehow uh, in order for things not to be taken over by whether it's a nefarious actor or simply somebody who wants to gain control of the DAO. Yep. And that sometimes the way it's been set up, it's been easy to do that. Yeah. Um, and I thought he was really honest about it. Yep. And honest about those, those issues so that they can be worked on rather than, hey, this is all supposed to work out great. You guys are me. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree with you on that. Um, one of the cool things, too, that, that sort of came out was a lot of cool connections with MakerDAO. Um, I actually saw one of their tweets the other day where they were sort of making fun of uh, poking fun at Uniswap's uh, DAO governance drama lately that Uniswap's been having to deal with. Um, and uh, the meme was a uh, first time dealing with that. And like, they have gone, MakerDAO has gone through a lot. Uh, for those that don't know, MakerDAO is the DAO behind DAI um, and promoting, uh, producing and promoting the, the stable balance DAI token you know, stable dollar. Um, so yeah, they've, they, they do a lot. But isn't circle somehow involved in that? I'm not sure. 
maybe as a contributor or as a financer, but I'm not, I would, that's something I'd have to look up. Um, but, uh, it was a, it was a really good, uh, Otter Lodge was talked about, um, from Shelby. Uh, Otter Lodge has been used for a lot of Dow tooling rolling rules. Uh, you know, cause the, the standard is using notion and snapshot snapshot, uh, for Dow votes. Um, and, uh, what was really cool was, you know, sort of seeing all of the different tooling features and functions that, uh, different DAOs are starting to use or be created for DAOs, um, to, uh, to be able to do their on-chain governance, on-chain voting. Um, and, uh, that's a really cool, cool thing. Um, I don't know. One of the things that I, I really liked uh, about Dow Planet this year was the all of the medical DAOs that were there. Uh, yeah, it was interesting listening to some of the issues they're trying to solve. I don't know if DAOs are going to solve them, but if I think what, what's happening is that people are finding that regulatory and legal systems are either not moving fast enough to deal with ever-changing issues in medicine and finance and documentation and they need tools governance much faster than they can get even though they have to fall back really to courts yeah. and regulation um, and they're you know, they're basically crying out for other ways of being able to govern and organize in these new newer systems, well not newer systems but newer issues coming up yeah no, uh, and that's that's it's uh, well. One a lot of a lot of the, the health DAOs we're talking about was ownership of your data, at um, you know following EU medical standard policy practices, yeah. um, having your DNA as an NFT, even uh, that you can control who has access to and who's test you know what tests are being done on it, um, but also that you get to benefit from that. Um, and that's one of the really cool things, aspects of, you know, your own chain type of ideas, not only your digital identity, but your, your digital chain identity. Um, well, were there any other NFT projects, uh, that you got to see out there? NFT projects. Is there any PPs out there? Yep, we saw a lot of poor pleb stickers. We're looking for, we're hunting for that five hundred dollars. Yeah. We're trying to get people to hunt for the five hundred dollars. Yep. You know what's really funny is how hard it is to give away money. Yeah, it was funny. Uh, it was. I thought that was high. I thought it was a pretty good little bounty yeah. for people to go and find. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um it was it was uh it was a good bounty put put up by poor pleb scavenger hunt. Um and so I was really uh, interested to see how that turned out. So really gonna do my best to, to follow up and see who won that and uh see what uh what kind of pieces were put forward on that. Uh any other NFT projects that you got to see? Uh, I'm trying to remember right now. The, the thing that's coming up for me is not an NFT project, it's Teller, which I understand to be a competitor to Chainlink. Yeah. It's an Oracle. Yep. Um, but I think they do things differently and they are not, I think they're a bit more decentralized. But I need to read up a little bit further about how that works, okay. how they're getting their data, and how, what it means, what what it means for them to say that they're more decentralized. Yeah. 
Um, I know what I was, I was coming to mind when I was thinking of, uh, Baker Dow. It was that Baker Dow complied with a court order and upgraded their contract to allow them to take funds from the hacker's wallet. This was, again, in response to the court order. Yep. So, uh, that was one of the things I was thinking about. And, um, Remember that. I remember I was talking about that, you know. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think that if there's a technology that allows you to recoup losses that are legally or that a court is going to mandate you do or rule that you do. You're not going to have a lot of wiggle room there. So you either need to make that contract immutable or understand that you're going to be complying with a lot of court orders. Yeah. Or maybe there's another solution that really involves insurance, but I can see that that could wind up being really high cost of insurance. Yeah. Um, there's another option, much harder, much slower, which is education, understanding what decentralization means, owning your crypto, or having a custody. I mean, I, it, it seems to me that large organizations are not going to custody their assets, they're going to contract, they're going to use something and or regulated custody arrangement. Yeah. And and what are your thoughts on that? Like, what do you think custody arrangements could look like? I... I've been listening to people. It doesn't seem like people are particularly happy with multi-sig arrangements for numerous reasons. Okay. Um, it seems like people are trying to come up with other ways of doing that. I think I'm not aware. I'm not. I'm not sure of all of the different industrial, all of industrial solutions for large balances, solutions for institutions. To um, have DeFi, DeFi uh, pieces in play? Yeah. What if, I actually haven't heard anything about, uh, you know, complaints about multi six lately, just that they're not utilized enough or that the keys aren't distributed well enough. I think that that's... I think that they're probably seen as riskier for some reason. Okay. I think this is a tough one. It, I don't have this problem. Like, okay. I can custody my own minuscule compared to what we're talking about in the institutional world. Yeah. So I don't know what, and I, I've never been close enough to that particular part of banks to understand what those risks are, what they're thinking about. Um, I would imagine that people are not going to be, like right now, if you go to a bank, you have either operations people or like mid level people are moving the money. Yeah. They're the ones keying in, sending in wires, pushing the money up. Yep. There are tons of controls in place and I wouldn't recommend trying to steal money out of that system without imagining that you're gonna get caught. Yep. But we still spend a ton of time putting controls in place and having internal audits of, of you know like 
if there was a bad internal bad actor, what could happen and what are the risks? Yeah. Um, With a basically immutable it, with a with a signature yep. or you know, a wallet like that, the risk of loss or mishandling, I think, feels much higher. I don't know how they're figuring out how to put controls in place to be able to sufficiently manage custody. I don't. I don't know. I would love to sit on and on on some sessions where banks are talking about or custody, you know, preferred or uh, trusted custody yeah. resources or, or talking about how to do that. I, I like a lot of the pieces with multisigs. Um, I've used a couple of them over the years. Um, I think as they expand on more chains, um, you know, I think one of the only issues is majority votes, but then those majority votes, the keys are not distributed pop properly, and one person or one organization has all the keys. Um, I've, you know, they have a lot of cool pieces within them that are being upgraded to where, you know, like a spreadsheet of, of withdrawals can be uh, submitted, and then each line gets voted on, you know, whether to approve or not approve. Um, I think stuff like that, or even batch releases. So, uh, you were talking about keying in withdrawals for people. Um, you know that being submitted at a, at a at any level after it's been approved, and then each transaction having to, having to be approved. Um, it's one of those things where having to double check your work before submitting it, and then having other people sign off on it. I'm just sort of shooting off the cuff here, but I think that one. That would, I see that as a two-edged sword. One, there's more responsibility because people are having to double-check other people's work rather than just checking a box or you know sending a an email. I approve this. Um, but at the same time, uh, there's the fear that it might slow down transactions too. That is a, that is a that is also. Yeah, that is also something that could be problematic. You're moving and waiting for funds to land every day. I mean, the the thing is, right now you'll have transactions at a bank where it's like literally the money has to hit by nine o'clock, ten o'clock in the morning to then be moved out to the next place that's supposed to go. Uh, by three o'clock. Yeah. And, but then, you know, you, I mean, most of the time this goes okay, but a lot of, there's, there are times when you might just make it Yeah. And you have to go looking and calling and freaking out, whatever, about like, looking for a, like a bond payment or something like that. Yeah. That hasn't actually been to where it's supposed to go. I don't know how the internal, I mean, obviously the money would move quicker, but yep. if the money isn't there, it can't go. You know? Yeah. So. Do you think it would reduce paper transactions? I don't know. I mean, do you, do you right now. So. Crypto lives in a world where the books don't really close. Yeah. At least in the sense of oh, over the week or whatever. But yeah. the banking system does. You know, they have, whether it's quarterly closes, weekly closes, daily closes, you know, yeah. to be able to true up what, what happened. And I, I wonder how, you know, for example, Let's say I took that idea, like the bond payment. You know, so you're getting the money, it needs to hit like an account, and then it needs to be routed to the next place. What would that look like in a crypto world 
Yeah. And what does that mean for keys? If you, you know, people are going to have thousands of accounts that they're going to have to, like, be able to use keys for every day. Yeah. I don't know. If that, that doesn't seem feasible. I, I mean, banks, like, use it one account. It's the account I have a reference, of, you know. So it's one that it's interesting to me, like, how, how that would work. The money would come faster. Do you need to have those clothes in some of the kind of way that they have them now? Anyway, that's kind of going down rabbit hole. It's not really. That's a good rabbit hole. We can save that for later. Um, I think one of the funniest uh, interactions I, I had with uh, someone uh, while at East Denver, um, I one I got a I got a shout out to Moonwell. Uh, Moonwell is launching out on onto uh, build on base with optimism. Uh, they're borrowing lending protocol, which is pretty amazing. Has some good returns, but also is really stable. Um, and so while I was uh, at the build on base through Coinbase uh, booth or little area, I got to actually talk with someone from MetaMask. And yeah. one of the questions I asked was, are the RPCs going to be locked for optimism like they are currently for ETH, for Ethereum? And uh, they, they were like, no, they, should, they shouldn't be. And I was like, well, look at this. You can't change the RPCs for ETH. Uh, you know, you're Ethereum. I used to be able to. Used to be able to. And? He knew exactly what version should, I should have. He was like, do you have 6.01? And I did. We went to properties and uh, looked at the app, and he even did it within his own MetaMask. And he's like, "Huh, that's very interesting. That that shouldn't be like that." Well, what I find interesting is that I thought that that blew up over Twitter uh, a few months ago that everybody was up having arms. this conversation about the fact that the RPC settings have been set to Infura, yeah, and people were trying to change them. And they were having trouble getting the, the. When they did change them, they were having trouble getting transactions done. Yes. So that, that's an interesting piece there. Um, I do want to shout out to uh, Jesse Pollock from Build on from Base. Um, really great, uh, great person. Um, really working to try to help different ecosystems grow within optimism. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see what the market does with optimism uh, the coming weeks. Um, you know, we ha we're having a slight retrace um, and going to be building back. I think. Uh, state where 